today we're going to look at a solution to problem A1 from the 2010 Putnam exam. So let's look at a statement of the problem. So let's let n be some natural number and we want to answer the question what is the largest k which we'll see will also be a natural number such that the set 1, 2, 3 all the way up to n can be partitioned into k subsets, a1 through ak, where the sum of the elements in each subset is the same. So I've denoted that by this. So the sum of ai is equal to the sum of aj, and that's for all ij. So we want to find the largest such k. So let's do some exploration first. So let's say n is equal to 1. And so that means we're looking for partitions of the set 1, but there's only one partition of the set 1, and that is just the set itself. Okay? So now let's look at n equals 2, and let's, let's look at partitions of the set 1 to 2. And there's actually two partitions of this set. You can either take the set itself, so you have a collection of subsets, which is just the single set itself, or you can take these two singletons as follows. So the singleton 1 and then the singleton 2. And let's just recall that a partition of a set is a collection of disjoint subsets that union to the whole set. So notice here we've got two subsets of 1, 2, and they union to the whole set and they're disjoint. Okay, but this is kind of obviously all the partitions of the set 1, 2, and notice this is the only one that fulfills the requirement that the sum of each uh, subset is the same, and in fact the sum in this case is 3. And so let's just notice that when n is equal to 1, we get k is equal to 1. When n is equal to 2, we get k is equal to 1 as well. Okay, let's do a couple more. So let's do n equals 3. And so that means we're taking the set 1, 2, 3. So let's look at all the partitions of 1, 2, 3. So we have 1, 2, 3. So the set itself. And then maybe down here at the bottom, we have 1, and then union, the singleton 2, and then union, the singleton 3. Great. And we're going to have a bunch of other possibilities in the middle. Maybe I'll just write uh, one of them out. So we have 1, 2, union, the singleton 3. Good. And then notice we've got some others too. So we have like 1, 3, union, the singleton 2 and so on and so forth. So I think you can probably like figure out a couple more that are possible. But notice the only ones that achieve the desired rule, in other words the sum of the elements in each part of the partition is the same, is this one in this case. So 1, 2, and 3, and notice this tells us that k is equal to 2. Um, for n is equal to 3. And now let's just look at n is equal to 4. I'll not write all the possibilities, but what I will do is I'll just write the partition that achieves the largest number. And what we see here is the partition that achieves the largest number is given by 1, 4, union, 2, 3. So in other words, k is equal to 2 in this case. So it looks like we have something happening with even numbers and odd numbers. I think maybe it is uh, reasonable just to jump to the solution. So I'll erase the board and then we'll do that. So we can summarize the exploration that we had on the previous page into the following claim. So if n is even, in other words it's equal to 2 times m, where m is some other natural number, then k is equal to m. In other words, the largest number of subsets in uh, a partition with this kind of rule is m. And furthermore, if m is equal to 2m plus 1, in other words, it's odd, then k is equal to m plus 1. Okay, so let's go ahead and let the subsets a1 to ak uh, be, so these are subsets of 1 to n, and let's say that they are a partition of um, 1 to n, 
such that the sum of everything uh, in each subset is equal to s, and this is true for all i between 1 and k. So we've got a partition with equal summed subsets. Okay, so now we want to make the following observation, and that is n is n aj, aj for some j between 1 and k. So I should say for some j between 1 and k. And so what that means is that because the sum of this aj is bigger than or equal to n, that tells us that this s is bigger than or equal to n. In other words, the sum of the elements in every subset is bigger than or equal to n. So that's the first observation that I want to notice. And another observation that I want to notice is that if we take um, the sum of all of the elements from 1 to n, so if we take 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up to n, so on the one hand, that's a triangular number which we can write as n times n plus 1 over 2 by a very common formula. On the other hand, that's going to be equal to the sum of the elements in A1 plus the sum of the elements in A2 plus the sum in the elements of AK. Okay? Because notice that uh, those sets form a partition, so this is just another way of counting the numbers 1 to n. Okay, but we know that each of these sums is the same, and they're all equal to s. So this is the same thing as s plus s plus s k times. In other words, that is s times k. Okay? But by our first observation, we see that s is bigger than or equal to n, so that means that this is bigger than or equal to nk. But now let's go ahead and look at the extreme left and right hand side of this inequality and notice that that allows us to divide by n on both sides because we have this kind of free n on each side of the inequality and that's going to give us k is less than or equal to n plus 1 over 2. Okay? So now let's look at two cases here. So now case number one, n is uh, equal to 2m. In other words, n is even. And so that tells us that k is less than or equal to 2m plus 1 over 2. But that's equal to m plus half. But you know k has to be a natural number. So what that tells us is that k is less than or equal to m. So that's the case when n is even, k has to be less than or equal to m. But now let's say the other case, which is when k is odd, so 2m plus 1. So Sorry, when n is odd, it is 2m plus 1. And so that means k is less than or equal to 2m plus 1 plus 1 over 2, but that's exactly equal to m plus 1. So notice, we have these bounds here, so k has to be less than or equal to m um, in the case when, m, when n is even, and k has to be less than or equal to m plus 1 in the case when n is odd, but notice that those, uh, uh, those upper bounds for k are exactly the values of k that we claim in the top. Okay, so I'm going to clean up the board and then we'll move towards the end of the solution. Okay, so so far in our solution we have the following. If n is even, in other words, it's 2m, then k is less than or equal to m. And then if n is odd, in other words, it's 2m plus 1, then k is less than or equal to m plus 1. Now all we have to do is show that k is equal to m in this case, and k is equal to m plus 1 in that case by giving an example of a partition that um, achieves this this value of k equals m, and we can do that uh, in the following way. Okay, so here we'll partition in the following way. 1, 2m, so keep in mind our sum of every term needs to be 2m plus 1 here, and now we'll just add 1 to this term and subtract 1 to this term until we're done with everything. Since we have an even number of terms, everything is going to pair perfectly. So here we have the next one will be 2, 2m minus 1, um, all the way up to the last one will be m 
m plus 1. So in fact, we take all of the numbers between 1 and 2m and we fold them on themselves and do grouping like that. And now notice, it's really easy to see here that we have exactly k subsets, which is what's claimed uh, up top. Okay, so to reiterate, before we used an inequality to show that k has to be less than or equal to m, and now we found a precise example when k is equal to m, and so that means that uh, this is the largest value. And now we can do the same thing over here. We'll do 1, 2m, all the way up to m, m plus 1, and then our final set will be a singleton, 2m plus 1. Now notice we have the same sum there, 2m plus 1, but in this case we have um, m plus 1 subsets. And I should have said over here this is m subsets. Okay, good. So this is the, f the end of the solution.